Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining the Liquid Webinar, Simplifying Application Delivery and Access in a Hybrid World. Uh, we'll get started in just a moment. And then, Nico, if you wouldn't mind advancing one slide, please. Should you go back one? Okay. All right. So we'll just wait a couple of more minutes uh, for some people to drop in. I think we'll start in a minute or two. Yep. Well, yep. Just a minute or two. Where lots of people drop in. So sit tight. Wait. Okay. There's some people joining. So we're we will get started in just a moment. There's still some people join in. All right, great. If you just joined, we're just going to give everybody just another minute or two to log in. People are still joining. All right. Nico, what do you say we get rolling? Let's get the show on the road. Go ahead, Mike. Let's get the, sh Price, let's get the show on the road. So, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining the Liquid webinar, Simplifying Application Delivery and Access in a Hybrid World. My name is Mike Bruce. I run sales for the Americas for Liquid. And with me, I have Nico Zeke. Nico, would you like to say hello? Hi there. Hi, everybody. I'll introduce myself a bit later, but uh, Mike, go ahead. Okay. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. I'm the moderator right now. <laughs> yeah. So, 
before we really get rolling, I'd like to take a minute to thank all of you for joining. I know that uh, you're all busy and you have a lot of things that you could be doing, and we appreciate your uh, joining us today. So who is Liquid? Well, we were founded in 2015. Our global headquarters are in the Netherlands. Our U.S. headquarters are in Florida. We have around 600 customers. Uh, we have customers that are over 100,000 users. And we recently released our fourth version, 4.0. And it's pr a proven and scalable technology. Uh, we're an open and flexible platform, but we have technology partnerships with Microsoft and VMware and Citrix and Amazon and I think uh, 68 others that uh, we aren't going to list out. And our tagline is IT like water from the tap. Another way to look at it is the iPhone experience around applications where you're on your phone you want an application, you can read reviews, you can look at ratings, you can click, and then all of a sudden it's on your phone. That's the experience that Liquid wants for your users. We can go ahead and go to the next one. So the, the title of today is Simplifying Application and Access. That implies that things have gotten complicated. And they have, uh, but how did it get so complicated? And Nico, you can just start pushing and I'll talk quick. Well, one is the users, right? So it's the endless uh, support of your users and trying to get as efficient as possible. As you do that, there's digital transformation, there's technological advancements um, by uh, on your devices. There's, you have to do all of this with security in mind. There's innovations, there's automation. There's the hybrid world, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. There's the management of access. There's new collaboration platforms. There's productivity, there's risk. Uh, I didn't mention the pursuit of carbon neutrality, but that's also an issue. And the rose by any other name would smell as sweet. What we call this is solutioning. So right now, I'm sure you're still blown away from the animation on the last slide. And now you've seen a Shakespearean quote. And then I literally invented a word, solutioning. <laughs> so what we mean by solutioning is any time that IT has to uh, serve a, a role a group of users, a location, et cetera, and do something that's not the standard, well, that's a solution. So an example could be everybody uses this version of a browser except for HR. They get a different version because they need add-on, an add-on or an extension. Uh, everybody gets this version of a desktop except for power users. They would get a VDI version. Interns would get a much lower cost. VDI version, but every time you have to solution to serve your business, that creates complexity. That creates manual effort for your team. Go ahead. And it's not just the simplification, but it's securing as well. So I, I was blown away by this statistic from the World Economic Forum, their global risks report that 95% of cybersecurity issues are traced to human error. So if, if it's not simple for your users to follow all of these different processes, the, one of the areas of cost for your organization could be security breaches. If you go to the next one, and then another area of costs when things don't go well is help desk cases, service desk cases. And those you can track on a, on a spreadsheet. Uh, the people involved, the cost per help desk case. So if it's not easy for your end users to follow all of the complexity, then it costs you in security and help desk cases. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. And so what does this back end complexity look like? Well, you could have 
uh, a cloud. You could have public cloud, a private cloud, a hybrid cloud. You could have a data center on premise. You could have, you could co-locate your data center or you could have a little bit of everything. Uh, there's physical and virtual storage, containerization. There's databases. You could have VMware, Citrix, Microsoft, Amazon, traditional servers, virtual servers, traditional desktops, virtual desktops. And to manage all of this complexity and solution for your users, there's different processes that people have to follow. There's different restrictions around data and access. There's different configurations and different images. And on this complexity, run applications. And those change all the time as well. So users could swap one application out for another. Uh, applications generally get at least one new version a year. Sometimes it's more than one. Then there's security patches. There's hot fixes. And they could be running on a multitude of different end user devices like Mac and Windows, etc. If we go to the next one. So how does Liquid help with all of this? Well, Liquid's really made up of three components. The first is the Liquid workspace. And for the end user, this is a digital and unified workspace, and it's available to them wherever and whenever they need it. If they're on their work computer, they just open their workspace. There's plenty of different options on how that can pre be presented. You could launch it from startup or a bunch of different other flavors. But users get, they launch their workspace whenever and wherever they need it. But the Liquid workspace is driven by our own smart icon technology. And for the user, that really doesn't mean anything. They want to use an application, they click the icon. But on the back end of that icon, IT gets to define what policy gets followed, how they manage their compliance, how they manage security. And there's all kinds of uh, launch sequences and contextual awareness that happens when people launch an application. And an example could be, I'm on my uh, company provided device, I'm in the office, I'm connected to the network and behind the firewall. When I click an icon, that could launch uh, a locally installed version of that application. If I'm on my personal device at the airport on a public Wi-Fi, when I click the icon, IT will say, hey, well, that's a different ball game. So we're gonna take extra measures to be more secure, perhaps launch a VPN. Um, and we may even give an online version of that application or a VDI version that could be more secure than the locally installed version. So IT gets to define all that happens after that launch sequence. And what we like to say is users get everything they want, which is access to their applications whenever and wherever, and IT gets all the power that they need to apply their policy. Why don't we go ahead, Nico? The other part of our platform is patch and release management. So this is a catalog of over 6,000 applications. IT would grab an application that they want to deploy. And in the Liquid Console, you decide things like, I want it to be an MSI or an MSIX or an App V package. And then you apply the customizations that you want. And this takes minutes, uh, not days. Uh, and then it goes into the Liquid Console where with the click of a button, Somebody could deploy it to user acceptance testing. You can collect all kinds of feedback from that group. And then you click a button and it could go to the next layer of testing. And then you click a button and it goes out into production. Anytime one of these applications gets updated, Liquid does the same work, which is we create that base package. We scan it for viruses and malware. We enrich it with all kinds of data. And then we will apply those customizations that you made. And then it shows up in the Liquid Console. And with the click of a button, it's off to UAT again. Uh, this setup store is also a unifying app store. So you can connect things to Liquid. We can connect to other app stores like Okta, Windows Store, et cetera. 
and why don't we go ahead and go to the next one, Nico? And then as I was talking about the back end complexity and smart icon technology, when you click the icon, uh, IT could have defined that, hey, this is now going to be served from a, do a different domain or a different location and a different cloud. And those things require access management. So Liquid will store all of that information so that users are just clicking the icon and then launching the application. Whatever happens in the back end gets managed through Liquid Access Manager by IT. Okay, Nico. And then click uh, one one more time. I got a I got a ghost uh, icon there. So in the in the upper left corner, that's the back end complexity. In this hybrid world that we're in today, you could have users that are all remote in a geography or you could have users that are all remote in multiple geographies. You could have users that go to one office all the time, every time. You could have users that bounce between multiple offices and remote, and every kind of variation of this that you can think of. In the middle of that sits the liquid workspace. So we have contextual awareness, and if a user's in the Hong Kong office, we, we will know it and we'll share printer information and other infrastructure details so that they can quickly do whatever they need to do in that office. If they move to a different office, we'll share all of that information. We manage that back-end complexity. And go ahead, Nico. And then there's our release and patch management, and one more, I think, which can unify app stores. Right, so whether it's the Windows or the Apple or whatever you're using, if there's blacklisting and whitelisting and approval before deployment, that sort of workflow, we have our own. We can work with whatever you got, and then we manage that access on the back end. And uh, I think if you go one more slide, now it's the Nico Zeke show. So. Before I turn it over to Nico, the ground rules are uh, Nico is fueled by questions. So if anything comes to mind, please drop it in the chat, and I'll help Nico manage it while he's doing his demonstration. Yeah. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Mike, for the introduction. Um, so it's my turn. I'm done being Mike's assistant right now, so I'll take over the show. Um, so we had a little issue with Mike sharing his screen. Uh, that's when you get you get when you get a sales guy running a running webinar. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, so what I will do, I will go live into Liquid. Um, so as as Mike said, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I can't explain Liquid in just half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, simply not enough time. So if you're interested, if you want to learn something more. Or if you think, well, that guy that, that didn't explain everything about a topic I'm really looking for, please reach out. Um, all uh, all the questions can be done in the chat. The more I get, the more I love to show everything live. I think that's the best thing to, to do a webinar. I will start off easy, and we'll go in the tech deeper and deeper uh, along as we go. I won't make it really too technical, but still, if it's too technical, let me know. Um, as promised, I would do also a bit of an introduction. And this, uh, if you guys can hear, uh, I've got quite a bit of a strange accent. Um, that, that's because I live in the Netherlands. Um, you can see my background. It's also a bit dark. It's freezing out here. It's uh, dark. It's uh, quarter past six local time. Um, so that's uh, where I am, what I'm located at, and, and what I do. Well, um, I usually explain liquid in what we do. What we deliver, how we deliver it, and, and and what I just love to do is tell how the modern workspace actually should work, um, and that's what I'm going to do um, right now. So you guys are all watching now to Liquid Workspace, one of the formats that we can come into because it's really flexible. So the whole understanding of IT is we had a fixed IT platform. Uh, you buy some licenses, you buy some hardware, or cloud solution, and you're fixed tied and bound to that solution for the next five years or so. Um, you invest a lot of time, uh, above all, a lot of money, of course, and you bother quite a few end users by migrating to new solutions. That's also what is 
holding us back into future solutions. So our dev team has designed a solution where flexibility is key. So not only in our front end, but also on the back end. So what if we can take away a few problems? And that's also what I would like to show to you guys. So a unified front end where everything is coming together. Windows, Mac, Citrix, uh, AVD, local apps, physical apps, cloud apps, software as a service apps, and everything in the middle of that. What if there was a solution where you can choose your own front end, start menu, uh, Microsoft Teams, other portals, our interface, a web interface, or combine it all together? Well, now we take away the problem that we have with the end users. And you got to make it smart, of course. The other thing is oh, pretty cool. Keep talking about hybrid because I think hybrid is the future of IT. And hybrid is something we already are we're already doing. I see a lot of companies moving to VDI, but also a lot of companies moving to Microsoft 365, which means an Intune managed workspace. Um, physical workspace. Then they're going to Azure Virtual Desktop, which is a cloud workspace. And they still do have an on-premise Citrix or VMware virtual desktop infrastructure or published applications. Problem with that is, how do I manage all, all of that? I need separate teams or do we? So what I'm also would love to show is how can Liquid bring that down into one single image where it doesn't matter if you want to manage a thin client, a MacBook, a PC, an Azure Virtual Desktop machine, Citrix environment, all together. What if you can manage it with one single image? The third thing I think is really important, getting applications in there is easy. Users need to have settings inside applications. Application is useless without the right settings and the right configurations. And I think that is where Microsoft is taking the wrong way. Microsoft with Intune is taking the wrong way for enterprises to deliver their applications. I would love to explain why in a few minutes. And then, of course, use our setup store to keep things up to date. That's the scope what I would love to explain right now. And we'll start kicking it off with our front end. This is demo.liquid.com. I will use multiple environments today. So this is live.liquid.com. And I will switch to something else, um, to the Microsoft Teams interface. So I'm an end user. My day starts and it will take a little while. I've got a slower machine, um, but the thing is, how cool is, uh, is it that this could be my workspace? So what is now going on? I go to teams.microsoft.com or start Microsoft Teams physically or online. It really doesn't matter. Corporate owned or private device. It really doesn't matter. I'll start Teams. <clears throat> Liquid will automatically detect. Is the Liquid agent installed? Is the device enrolled into Liquid Workspace? If so, Going to auto generate a couple of tasks. What's already happened? I've already signed into Liquid Workspace, already detected I have the agent running on my device. It's already checked do I need to install, configure, maintain, update, or remove anything on my local device. I'm on a personal device, non domain joint, I'm working from home. The only thing I needed for this was port 443, which means as an end user, I only have to remember one thing and only one thing for my work go to Teams. Go to Microsoft Teams. This is my workspace. And Liquid will handle everything on the back end. Because what we love to bring is the Apple experience to end users, but it is extremely complex. Apple has changed the world and they did a great job. Bring in an app store, you download an app, it will install it automatically. It will start up. It will ask you, would you like to use this username or password? Well, that seems like a great idea. That's pretty easy. Would you like to give access to? That's actually where I stop reading. I'll just accept everything. And whenever there's an update, Apple will automatically download and install an update. As an end user, I don't see it. I really don't want, I, I really don't care. The problem with corporate IT is the vast variety of applications that we have with becoming configuration. Because Excel is used without data locations. Excel is used without fonts and macro, and macro security. Excel is also useless if it can't access data. But think of printers, registry settings, background, update configurations. It's all just in a single portal for the end user. And it comes in a variety of ways. So I can go to any portal. And that's the cool thing I think about Liquid is the flexibility. So while loading, it's also here. And you can't see it, but it's also in my start menu. There are just some apps installed on my Windows 11 machine. And this is partially in Dutch. But here you see a portal. And it actually already checked on the background. What do I need to install, configure, maintain, and update? Any site, any portal, any start menu, or a mix of everything. You can create your own workspace. So if you look at 
Microsoft. They have the Microsoft Azure Apps portal. We can integ integrate applications over there. We can make it smarter. If you look at Citrix, they're brilliant in bringing in virtual applications. What about the physical ones? What about the physical just-in-time deployment? With VMware, the same thing, and then it's really expensive. What if you could completely customize it and have it your own look and feel, which fits your corporate environment? Well, then I'm an end user. I will switch now to the liquid interface, of course. Um, here you see, I can browse my colleagues. This handsome face right here is me. You can see where I'm located. I can do remote control as a serve desk user or manage the user as a serve desk manager. This is my mobile number. Um, these are some of my colleagues, of course. I can request an application. So this is not only our catalog. You see the latest trending and the popular applications in Liquid Workspace. So which are newest, especially for Bruce, I've created Google Chrome. Trending, which been you've been used most uh, the last seven days and popular for the last 30 days. You can give ratings to applications, etc. But also, are there any approvals? Can I approve or reject some applications? I did it a little bit the inception way. I approve myself some apps and I can reject them also again, which is not quite useful in a demo, by the way. Um, but yeah, it can in integrate also with other solutions. So it's not limited just to our interface. And that's the power and the beauty of Liquid. If you think it's a good idea that you should include it in your current solution, there is always an opportunity. There is an API or a PowerShell module. So every button you see in Liquid is av available via PowerShell or API. So you can interface with all kinds of other solutions, making that flexibility again. Oh, another important thing is in Workspace is just in time deployment. So I will do a refresh. It will take a second to load. It will actually do a full refresh of my Workspace. Full security. Full check what do I need to update, configure, install, and maintain. And this is important for a deeper part of my story. But for me as an end user, I will start the demo completely in front. I will remove this application from my workspace. It is not removed from my device. So what I will do, add and remove programs. See here, 7-Zip is installed on the 9th of December, a couple of days ago. So I will uninstall the app. Uh, this is all live, so it can go wrong. But let's give it a go. Second, it's gone, physically gone from my system. So now I'm an end user and I think I start my work day and I can also do this from Microsoft Teams or the other portals, but I will do this from our workspace. I will go to the catalog. And I think I need 7-Zip. So 7-Zip, here it is. Ah, it will cost my manager $10. There is no workflow for approval. So when I go back to my workspace, it is there, but it's not yet installed. And I will click on it, Liquid will download, install, configure the application immediately on my local device. That's what we call the Apple experience, because now you can see it's installed on the 13th. Actually, it's right now, of course, physically installed. This is the experience that we want to give the end users using corporate applications. I want that app, I want it right here, or right now, or working in the way I expect this application to work. And to do this, we combine a bunch of technologies. So now I'm going to the more technical part of things. First step in the technical part. I will go to the management plane. So actually what this application did, somebody changed it. It actually was workflowing. This workflow <laughs> downloaded a file to my local system, an MSI. You downloaded some custom files. As said, without settings, applications are useless. So I need my corporate configurations in them. And of course, we want to install it. But then in a the smart way, so Liquid had to detect, is it already there? If so, and if it's the current version, okay, I will sk skip this and go to launch. If it's not there, I need to make sure that I need to install it. And as an end user, I don't need to, I don't have to be an administrator. So of course, we apply a transform file and apply a log file. So I know when things are going good or wrong. Clean up your own mess, of course. Um, drink your own champagne. Whenever you make a mess, you got to clean it up. Then start the application. It is what for an end user, it's just an application. This is the only thing an end user wants to see. Click and run. It's already there. And I'll do it again. Click, and it's there. Doesn't install it anymore. 
unless I change something. But then it's a pretty fast system. It will only apply changes. This is what you want to bring to your end customers. Click and run on any single application. But now let's go into one deeper step because now we're going to start talking about how about hybrid? Pretty cool if you do this on a specific machine with the end user. I want my end users working on a Windows device physically on their endpoint because already have to buy that, those things and those things are expensive. Why do I need a virtual system? You don't. The thing is that we use a virtual system is for ease of management. We can create a golden image. Everybody logs on to the same image with the same stack of hardware. But it's extremely expensive. What if we can change that around? Make the users smarter or dumber or something in the middle again. I read the Excel. I'll click on Microsoft Excel. Now it goes to Excel online immediately. And I right click on this app. Here you can see what we actually did. This is, I think, in my world, a perfect example of contextual awareness of an application and hybrid working. So what I will do, I will change something. I'll enable the specific tasks and make sure that I have snapshot to development. I'll explain this in a minute. I go back to my workspace. And now I will click on the same Excel. What Leslie is doing right now, or should be doing, whenever my system decides to work with me, there it is. Here we go. Here is my physical Excel. So with just one checkbox, the whole context of this device changed and Liquid immediately processed all the changes. So I wanted to prove that whenever you make a small change, it's there immediately. That's quite handy. So I'll explain that also a bit further. But this is the hybrid idea. So I'm allowed to use this. Start Excel 2016 physically on my device. No limitations. We're only going to detect. Can we find it? Yes or no, this process. We found it. Then the end user says, well, ha, I'm going to leave office. I'm going to, uh, to Starbucks for a cup of coffee. OK, I'm going to my Apple phone. But I need Excel right here, right now. I'm not on my corporate laptop. OK. Let's start it on uh, physically on that device if the platform is iOS. So the user can now hop from this Windows laptop or whatever he or she is using to a mobile phone and use the same icon, the same application. Then, of course, migrating in into future technologies is always a pain in the, now you know the word I want to say, it's always difficult. It's always complex. And we have to do this. Usually, just with a big bang, we have to change everybody. And whenever it fails, wow, you get unhappy users. What if you have a solution that you can just migrate a few users, start let, let them work around and play around with that, and all the other users used to use Excel 2013 and upgrade them step by step, group by group, user by user, device set by device set, or a combination of everything. This is what we do here also insert the old line so i can have a combination of excel 2016 2013 the only thing the end user has to remember click on excel and it can also be in the start menu as uh, uh, again this is also a smart icon then the end user is going to work from home on a byod bring your own device oh boy here we go again hybrid working i don't want to install anything on that device let's say okay you need to have at least certain amount of security and i created a filter around this and can combine anything around this filter and set something as deep and as much as you want to i said i just want to make sure that a specific file is there before it launches if i do so well this is for demo purposes only otherwise we just fire up an avd machine which i simply don't want but we're connected to azure virtual desktop in this case so now i have a group of users on the modern version of excel I have a couple of users which can work on an Apple device. I've got the majority of users running on Excel 2013 and a bunch of users running on Azure Virtual Desktop in the cloud. Oh boy, and if it's not safe, you can also go to Excel Online again. So it's all for the end users, the same button. And now from an IT standpoint, we can create a perfect world. Let's think of, first of all, of, uh, of those expensive VDI services. On-premise running cloud really doesn't matter. You have to take those premium licenses to manage apps physically installed on endpoint, the NetScaler-ish stuff, the premium uh, uh, Citrix desktop or VMware desktop stuff you need to buy in a very expensive license called Workspace One or Citrix Workspace. 
what if for a bunch of users you can uh, start using RDS uh, for a bunch of users as you refer to desktop? For a few users, use Citrix because they have a dongle or need the power of Citrix, and the rest of the user can run locally on a device. Yes, that is something you need to do and need to maintain with one single image. That's what we can do. We can start building workflows for the users in one single interface, deploy everything from that. So every time I click around, it's a refresh. So now the hybrid problem for the front end of the end user is sort of solved. And on the expense side, we can save quite a bit of money, of course. Now we go into a deeper problem. And if there are any questions, by the way, um, just let me know in the chat. Um, feel free to ask me anything. Um, if everybody's still happy, you can also say I like it. <laughs> um, so how did we do that? Well, first of all, that's the migration path. We hate migrations. I, I don't hate migration. I, I'm a tech guy. I really like to do so. But from a corporate standpoint, I, I would say I hate it. So what do we do? Well. We start off with connecting to what you already have. It is here. I'm a live with liquid.com. I'm here connected to Citrix, to Azure Virtual Desktop, and to RDS. These two are on premise. This one is in the cloud. Click what you already have, connect to it, read out what's available over there, and drag it into the new workspace. Then you can start building on. The smart icons, as I showed earlier. That's actually what we did with Excel. So I use this one from the Azure Virtual Desktop environment. So it's automated. I plugged into also the future of IT. I can combine it. And how cool is it that I can not only combine one Azure Virtual Desktop environment and one Citrix environment, but as many as I want? Silos, configurations, I don't care. An end user doesn't care because I don't see it. So we solve that part of the hybrid problem. Now another issue pops up. How are we going to manage all of that? How are we going to manage all of those virtual and physical environments all at once? Because that's the reason that we went to Citrix. It's easy of access. It's all the same configurations. The end users simply know where to go. They, they go to the storefront one day, to the Netscaler uh, zone the other day, get completely confused. I can tell you stories about multi-factor authentication for really smart persons that they simply don't understand. Okay, what do we do with Liquid? This is the first part. Typically, you have a list of a golden image, a test image, an Amazon image, thin client image, and I can go on and on with this. But Liquid, it will be only one image. I assigned this actually to our Azure Virtual Desktop environment in production. Citrix servers also get the production version. Citrix test environment will automatically get the test applications. The HP laptops, which I meant to be designing as corporate owned devices, also get the production versions. I said, well, let's, let's do something. Okay, let's do the log on tasks. If, and here's Excel, if, uh, it's an, uh, uh, a laptop from Best Buy or whatever. Uh, let's just give you the idea. Um, that has already Excel on it. First, uninstall it. Detect the bloatware on the device. Remove the things I don't want to have on that device. Of course, then it needs to be secure. Let's apply Windows updates first. Then do Windows settings, then do the VMware client, et cetera, et cetera. Liquid will do the end-to-end -end configuration. So we're going to create golden images, cloud images. Windows based thin clients, Mac deployments, yes, and also Windows devices, endpoints, and tablets, all from this one single deployment. And to do so, I think this is going to change the world. This is typically what I see in enterprise a lot of Google Chromes. And this is something you really don't want to do. This is if I need to update Google Chrome, I need to do it, let's count seven times. And if you count in Bruce's Google Chrome, eight times. Eight times through the whole packaging process. And this is actually what the majority of the solutions want you to do. If you look at Intune, you need to create a Win32 app or another format, but you need to create one single package. So in order to deploy it to your endpoints, you need to fill in all the settings and configurations, like homepage security settings, 
plugins into one single package. What if there's a department that needs uh, separate settings? Oh boy, here we go again. Let's make a separate package. And we have a separate environment. Oh, let's make a third one. Why don't you just get started? Then comes the update. I need to do that for all the platforms, all the configurations, just once again. And this is the real world example. It will go forever and ever. And on average, the company has at least 200 applications. Well, it's actually a lot more if you dive really into what an application is. But a lot of work. So if you look at, for instance, Intune, Phase one, they're not compatible running good on, on the cloud and Azure Virtual Desktop. They're not brilliant in deploying applications and configurations over there. If you look at policies, they process something and also system center in the in a way, whenever system center or the policies think it's a good time for them, it's never a good time for us as IT guys. We want something right here, right now, at least we want a full flow of this. So this is where Liquid is going to stand out. This is just a really small example, but we I don't have enough time to explain everything. But this package is managed by the connector named Setup Store. So we use this package from our Setup Store. It can also come from a Microsoft Store. You can set it, of course, the homebrew apps, but this part is kept up to date automatically. But we can apply this to all the platforms. We take away such a load on the packaging, but also on the frustrations of end users. With this, this is so stupid simple. What do we do? Well, what you need to learn is how do we create a clean package? I want an application that can be in un installed unattendedly with absolutely the minimal things I need in this. So, uh, disable auto updates, disable everything. So there are some questions, by the way. Um, I will come back to that in a, in a few seconds after this story. Um, I don't think Mike uh, saw them, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so in this installation, there is absolutely nothing. We got a clean installation. What's the big advantage of this? Well, it's an MSI in this case. What is the advantage of an MSI? I can install this on any Windows platform. So I can install it on the server-based computing. I can install it on the VDI. I can install this on an endpoint. Install as an Azure Virtual Desktop on Windows 10 shared operating, 11 shared operating systems. This is pretty cool. Another advantage over this is whenever there is nothing in this package, it is stupid simple to update this package. Whenever Google decides there's a new update, it's like a two minute job. To do so, we separated the configuration from it. So we're actually going to inject the settings on demand. The home page, default Chrome settings, actually also a patch. But yeah, then you come across, okay, not all settings are compatible with Citrix or any other virtual platform. So I made an extra block. If you're in a Citrix test environment or Citrix server, apply these settings. Then if you are on endpoint, corporate owned device, which you're not in the office, I want to remove some stuff from Google Chrome due to security restrictions. Live, right here, right now. Whenever you're back in the office, you just fine, go ahead. I don't want to package this in policies because then I can't change and it's unsecure. I don't want to do this in a complete MSI because it will frustrate users and will uh, large enough the time to do to deploy everything. And then, of course, for specific departments, I have settings. But for the end users, once again, just to click a launch button. With this, I can stage this up to our test stage. Now, my test image is updated, which means whenever I fire up my Citrix environment, it will automatically start processing on the test environment updates, create a new golden image. And users can test it. They can actually self approve the applications if they approve it, and they can actually self stage. Here we go, right in production. Now I've updated. Citrix environment, Azure Virtual Desktop environment, and when the end users will click on it on the endpoints, automatically install the app. I don't have to do anything with that. So on the front end, I've now solved a hybrid problem. On the back end, I've solved an imaging problem. In the middle, I'm going to solve one thing more. But right now, I'm going to ask questions. To get the app, ex uh, app local experience, I presume I would need a user to install the liquid agent, potentially onto a personal device. 
You're absolutely right, David. Um, so David asked the, asked the question, do I need to have the liquid agent? Yes. Um, if you're going to physically install the apps, yes. If you want to use software as a service apps. Or if you want to use remoting apps, you're not required to have an agent. The user can do an opt-in itself. So it will self-enroll. And you can also do a limited enrollment so that you can allow specific applications just enroll and don't get access to the full device, for instance. Then Danny also had a question. If a user changes a setting uh, for an application, where it's being stored, locally or uh, on the backend? Depends. That's uh, a deeper discussion, but with Liquid, you can make a decision. It can be using Liquid, it can be using any alternative solution. In our case, we use the Azure Blob Storage currently. It can also be a combination of everything. And you can also decide to use FSLogix, for instance. So I hoped. These questions are now answered. If not, just let me know. Um, due to time restrictions, I will proceed. Um, so we've got now unified front end. And yes, we can deliver any application. Um, we've got basically all the crap I have MSI X, Appetach, MSI 60 bit, 8 bit applications, executables, PowerShells. We can build and control everything. To show you what we can do, go to Excel. The actions. This is the perfect wrong example, of course. It's always what happens. It's a lockdown application. Modify the package for now. Yes. So now I'm allowing myself to modify the package. So I can also lock this down, for instance, for server test. I can do millions of things around this on a device context or a user context. It means that we can do things to uh, stream on device to drive methods. But then can also be by a BYOD. Okay, I want to do drive map thing. Oops, it's going the wrong way around. Drive map. I guess drive. It's been late. Connect drive mapping. I want to do this on the user device context. I want to use also a specific SSO template. So we can do this with BYOD machines. We can connect to multiple ADs. Azure ADs at the same time, and we can play around with the identities. So if you have a merge and acquisition company, it's not a problem. So you can include them in the current format, form of liquid, and have these guys up running within a the day. Then slowly start moving to in incorporating the corporate identity. We can do basically everything around it. Now you see something specific. You see Windows and a Mac icon, which means I can do one task which will run both on Windows and Mac at the same time. I don't have to create specifically separate tasks for Windows and Mac devices. Maintain just once. And yes, we can do all this. As you can see, copy directory, Mac device, edit files, move files, MSIs, of course, or Windows only, Mac app, Mac only, of course. But you don't need a separate Mac solution anymore to manage those things. We forgot about one thing. Really cool, right? We can build every application, every configuration, every backend. Single unified front end, you choose. Single unified backend using our connectors and single image. How do we get these, keep these things up to date? That's always a problem. And although I like doing my job, I hate packaging. And I really don't hate packaging. I, I really like doing things uh, on a technical deep level and, and try to fix stuff. I hate to keep repackaging Google Chrome because it will take forever and forever. And it's, uh, Google Chrome is updated twice a week. So we have our setup store. You can type it right because I'm doing this live again. Chrome. I think Google Chrome updated December 7th. Oh boy, Google is late. We monitor these applications 24 7 every day of the year, also with Christmas. Check it out and try it. Um, the thing is, Whenever there's an update, it will pop up in our set of store. It's got around 4,000 unique applications, uh, and they've told me around 60,000 branches currently. I will select the application from our set of store. Apply this to my test users. Remember, whenever I'm done with this, my Citrix test image is already updated. I don't have to worry about this. Best thing about this is, 
also show you security information, by the way, but there's nothing. So virus, malware, hash code, CV numbers. If something is not really right, you'll notice. This is a template. Remember, you're only going to do this once. But now this is the thing to create a really clean application. No configurations in this. This is where you separate from Intune and how you the life so much better. Create a clean package. This is a template I can create for my enterprise and I can select the features I like. Do this only once. Say, okay, perfect. This is for the Citrix servers. They look at the production one. This is for the Citrix test servers. Look at the test one. Oh, and by the way, it's an emergency. So as soon as the device startups, I want to install the app right away. Just to give you the idea. <coughs> Production and test. Now I've created a full package of Google Chrome, and we can do it for all thousand other packages. Let's focus on the business apps. Let's focus on something cool. So now I've created an image with a bunch of applications within minutes, which I can basically straight away push into Azure Virtual Desktop. Just install the liquid agent in Azure Virtual Desktop that runs over port 443. You can just go ahead and knock yourself out, create a smart icon, and migrate some users to there. If it doesn't work, reconfigure the smart icon. The users will not see the difference. You can hide the launch and splash screens. So with one image, one interface, one unified idea. With that said, I am pretty much through the webinar information, but are there any questions you guys want me to answer or any thoughts on, on, on the story? Share them in the chat, if you will. Yeah, Nico, for some reason, I, I can't see the questions. I think you already figured that out. Yeah, I got the, the questions already answered that were already there. Yeah. So, any other questions? Okay, is there any integration into software asset management tools to control licensing and licensing compliance? Yes, there is. You can build it yourself. Um, you can use these of our, uh, our actions. So, actually, I didn't show that, but I do it in licensing. It says perpetual, it's a license trick and concurrent user or device, license count, cost per license, license key, and type is professional monthly or annual. But you can integrate with any external solution there is using our api um, it's rest api or javascript api or powershell so i hope that answered the question yeah nico the the only other thing i'd add to that is you can you can with the use of the smart icon you could have an uninstall process run and that feeds right into the reharvesting. a lot of the sam tools don't offer reharvesting, so this would be an extension of that that you could use. Yeah, yeah. So there were pops in another question. Does it do any repackaging such, such as RDP to HTML5? Does it act as a broker for those applications? It acts as a broker. So we use all the native technologies. We are basically an imaging workspace management deployment, single sign-on, and release patch mechanism. We use the RDS or HTML5 or even the native installations on physical devices. So we do that. And there's another question popping in. I like the questions, just keep them coming. Um, is reporting available of who use what applications for how long and uh, for instance? Yes, there is. And I think this is, I'm going to show this yet again live. Um, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> um, let me see, dashboard. Because we do this, I think, also pretty cool. Give me uh, one second. Somebody's banging around with. Somebody was doing the dishes. <laughs> so it gave me the time to do the, uh, the loading. So, yes, we use Microsoft Power BI for uh, reporting. This means it's uploaded into a big data system. And now we use Power BI, but you can create your own dashboards. And yes, we can see. Which applications have been used by who? Was it installed successful? How many times it's launched? And I can just drill through, include them, see the device compliancy, see what's going on with devices, the app held on a specific device, et cetera, et cetera. So we gather a bunch of information. And you can simply export this into any of these solutions. By the way, Real with Cheese, my favorite computer name inside Liquid. It's from uh, Pulp Fiction, the movie. Um, I hope that answered the questions. Um, 
for now. If there are any more questions, just let me know. Otherwise, um, like anything else you want to share for now? Well, I have a slide with my contact information. If uh, all the questions are are done, we can go over to that uh, and wrap up, or we can sit here and see if somebody has any other questions. There's one more question just popping in. Does it integrate into Microsoft Endpoint Manager, for example, uh, uh, for service account with SAM? Uh, now they're popping in. There are possibilities to do so. I can't show this live right now, but I think this is a good follow-up question. <laughs> Um, another question just popping in, how difficult is it to migrate from the existing other systems such as Citrix AV and bring uh, them into this environment? It's really easy. Um, just create a connector. And this is, I think, whenever things are in, in place, uh, a, a minute till a couple of hours job. So given the, the, the questions, I think, Few people really liked what we were doing, Mike. <laughs> uh, at least I hope so. Um, if people get, are really interested, and I, I really hope so, um, please challenge us um, um, for a one on one session or if you want to see a follow up on some of the topics. Um, I'm not able to show everything in just a, a, a short hour, um, but I want to go deeper with you guys and really challenge, uh, challenge me. Um, but I really liked. Uh, showing it and I hope Mike enjoyed it and the rest of you guys also. With that said, I'll hand it back to Mike right now. Yeah, and if you wouldn't mind putting up the slide deck again, Nico, please. Yeah, um, that's going to be a bit of a problem, I think. Where is it? <laughs> Can I open it right now? I wish I had a solution like Liquid. <laughs> it's like a uh, um, tenth so slide, slide maybe. Go up. After demonstration, but thank you, I think. There you go. There you go. Okay. Give me. Yeah, there we go. It's, there we go. Okay, here we are. So, yeah, Nico just covered some of this, but we'd love to talk to you more, and we can help you navigate the different use cases. And uh, if you, you know, Liquid is not meant to rip and replace all of the technology that you have around application management but it really is meant to start by filling the gaps that you might have, the things that you can't do or the things that take a tremendous amount of manual effort. And we'd love to talk through any use cases that you have. Uh, my contact information is up on the screen. Feel free to send me an email or give me a call. And on behalf of Nico and myself and Liquid, thank you very much for attending today. The recording will be available. If you send me an email, I can share it with you. But thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, guys. Talk to you next time. So I think there's another thing. Yeah. Um, thank you, David. Um, um, you can reach out to us. Thank you very much. Uh, enjoy, guys. Enjoy the enjoy the holidays. Bye. Thank you.